Percy Ware, one of the more sensual and seductive pop artists at the moment who is dropping some really good music that's catching a lot more attention now I'd say than it did back when she was first starting out in like the early 2010s or whatever and you can tell that she is catching more success because she's seen fit to drop a deluxe edition version of the album that came out last year What's Your Pleasure? I think at this point artists who are doing that are very much capitalizing on the fact that you know there's 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 there's, there's a love for the music that they're putting out they have more music stored in in the vaults so why not just drop it a year later keep that momentum going keep that success going drop more singles that are popping that are fun just absolutely danceable groovy tunes that she does it just makes sense and it's good to see that she's getting success too because I do think her music is actually really quite good. That being said though, I think I expected a little bit more from this deluxe edition album given the fact that she did drop what I think is actually... Maybe... Perhaps... Her best song to date? I don't know. I, I maybe. When she dropped, please, I was definitely, I was, I was doing this. I was scratching my head, man. I was scratching my head. I couldn't quite fathom how please didn't make it on the official album. It just seems like a no brainer to have had that as one of the main singles for the album. Obviously it's a single now and you know, obviously she might not have made it when the album originally came out, you know, the original Watch Your Pleasure came out. I don't know, obviously, I don't know the background information behind that thing, but it, it is kind of crazy to think that this is a deluxe edition track because this is easily, you know, dance floor ready, radio ready, topping the charts ready type pop music here. Not that it would at the moment because I don't really know what the hell is going on with the UK chart trends? I, I don't get it. But in another universe, this would be number one. And um, I, 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 yeah, I was shocked that this came out and it's just so fun. It's got the usual tropes that you'd expect from her vocals and things like that. Just that really slick, really uh, well-performed vocal performances that fit her tracks really well. The synth pop kind of emphasis is really highlighted on this track as well. It's different to the title track of What's Your Pleasure, it's different to Spotlight, it's different to Remember Where You Are, but it's just her honing in everything that, that she's done up until this point and just making a really well-crafted pop song. The other track, Hot and Heavy, is just all the same things I've basically said there. I wouldn't say it's quite as addictive as Please though, but it's still a really, really fun tune. The big vocals on this one really sell it and bring it home. Originally when I heard it, actually, I wasn't that keen on it, but it really does hit hard. And I think, you know, lyrically pretty standard stuff, I guess you could say. Um, but I don't really think it's a bad thing. There are some other good tracks as well that I do want to highlight. Uh, Impossible, I think the, <laughs> the more seductive vocal approach here is reminiscent of some of the other sultry, uh, sophisticated pop tracks from What's Your Pleasure. The rhythmic heavy groove is carrying this one like crazy though. It's a really good instrumental here. Reminds me of some of the best moments from Roshi Murphy's Overpowered, which I still think is a fantastic album that is not getting the props it deserves. It should be considered a classic pop album at this point, and yet you would think that it's non-existent because if you never see anyone talking about it, and I don't get why. Then you've got Eyes Closed, which is a track that I'm not entirely sure works fully. It's very whispery, a bit too whispery, actually. I don't think the vocal performance is, is, is entirely as flattering as it should be here. Um, but it's interesting because she sometimes, well, actually, she often does these kinds of vocal performances and it really works. But this time around, it just feels like she's going a bit too whispery. Very 80s synth pop here. It's so 80s synth pop that it reminds me of 80s synth pop songs that are trying to be futuristic. It, it's almost like she's trying to like emulate those kinds of songs. It's weird. And the part where she says, you know, the eyes closed a little bit, it's so Vogue Madonna. Like I, I do wonder if she was trying to do her own version of that with that part of the track. It, it, it just feels so reminiscent of that. It's an okay song. I think it's carried more by the instrumental than anything else, um, but not as strong as like the best moments. Towards the end of the album is where I start to lose it though. Like you do get some really great fresh pop tracks coming up until this point. 
and, and even Ice Close, which I'm not huge on, it's still a good catchy little track. Um, but then he gets like Pale Blue Light and it's just a bit weak lyrically, like there's not really anything you've never heard before here, it feels pretty generic. I wouldn't say she was ever the most enticing lyricist or the most original writer in the world, in fact I think that's not really the point of her music anyway, but um, I'd at least expect more interesting lyrics than this. 0208 is a track that's not that distinct really in many ways. Um, it just feels like I'm, I'm losing my attention at this point. There's just a few tracks in a row that don't really highlight her best qualities and um, just, just, just fly by. Like really not impactful at all considering how big some of the pop bangers are on this, you know, deluxe section of her What's Your Pleasure album. Like you think like she'd she keep the momentum going, but she slows it right down and just makes some really drab, meh song. The final track is okay. Um, brings a bit more of a groove back, but not enough really to save it. Um, you know, it, it, it just feels like it's an, it's a, it's, well, it's not an album of two halves because it's a deluxe edition, but the deluxe version it feels like it's split into two halves. The best cropper tracks are all at the start and the last few, take them or leave them. I still think it's solid overall though, and I've got enough material from her at this point now to say that I think she's a really good pop artist. And she already was before she dropped tracks like Please, Hot and Heavy, but I think she's actually honing in what makes her so appealing. And I think she's done that with some of the tracks from this deluxe edition. So. There's potential here for her next album to be absolutely fantastic. I mean, Watch Your Pleasure is really good anyway, but I think there's even more potential for her to just nail what she's doing and just make it so, so good. But for now, I'm going to be grooving to those tracks. I think they're really good. No point in scoring this. Um, hope you don't mind if you're expecting a score. I shall not be giving a score because I just think it's a bit pointless. It's like EPs when I don't get scores to EPs. You don't need to slap a number on everything, but you can you can say that this gets my approval and you should at least be checking out like the tracks I've highlighted, Impossible, Hot and Heavy, Please. They are the ones you want to be checking out. Um, but yeah, no point scoring it. It's a deluxe. It's an extension, but it's worth talking about because she is a good artist and that's it. We'll call it there. Thank you for watching. Have a good day and goodbye. Goodbye.